this is lab 22, um, and lab 22 is on non-parametric parametric regression techniques um, associated with lecture 22 on the same topic. So we're going to look at some of the non-parametric regression techniques that we talked about in lecture. Um, and so let's generate some nonlinear data. Um, rather than pull out a particular data set, let's just look at some nonlinear data. Um, so let's maybe generate um, 200 points. Um, maybe we'll do some kind of sinusoidal thing. So let's say negative 4 pi to 4 pi. Um, and I'm going to sort these just for the ease of plotting them. Um, and so those are the x's. And then y, we'll just have sine of x plus, um, I don't know, maybe some Gaussian noise. So we're going to have some Gaussian noise, mean 0, and um, I don't know, maybe a standard or a variance. From, nope, standard deviation of 0.25. So that's SD. Um, we can plot this. If, uh, if my kernel works. <laughs> Another use of the word kernel. Um, one of the most overused words. Let's try to restart this kernel. There we go. Okay, so we plot it. That's what it looks like. Looks like some sinusoidal points with some scatter, right? If I put this noise down to something really low, get perfectly sinusoidal. Um, but we want to have make this a little more interesting. So we'll add in some noise. Now I could fit a regression model. So I could say y by x. Um, and uh, if I plotted x and y, I could add in my regression line, um, a, b line. I could add in the coefficient, uh, my regression and line. And let's say the color is red. So that's what it would fit, right? It doesn't fit very well. And you could try to fit some higher order polynomial um, to this, I suppose. Um, how would I do this? So I could say add an x squared term. The i here is to, is to, if I add x to caret 2, that interprets it as, um, but that notation is already taken for regression. So this says, no, 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 take the x thing, square it, and then just include that, right? Um, so I can include some higher order terms, you know, Maybe something like that. Um, yeah, still doesn't work very well. Um, so adding on these, uh, uh, I know why. Hmm. I can't just plot this line like this, can I now? Let's go back. What's going on here? <clears throat> uh, it's not going to be a line, right? Obviously. Um, but I can add on um, my predictions, um, maybe something like that. <clears throat> and uh, I think this might have to be a data frame. There we go. And let's actually just make this a line, something like that. And then we'll make it a red line. Okay, so I'm just adding on. Okay, so that's fourth degree, right? So we know what the what the power expansion of sine is, right? It's all the odd powers. So actually, let's just say, right? So it should just be my odd powers. Um, but you know, you could approximate it um, if you add down enough of these terms. Eventually, right? If you add down different number of these terms, you would eventually get to the correct fit. Not really doing great, and so I have this high order polynomial term, and it's still it's gonna take a lot of terms to fit this correctly, right? Um, so we add on some more and just see how it goes. Uh, just for fun, let's add on some more terms: seven, eighth order term, ninth order term. But we're finally getting somewhere. It has its first predicate, but you can see how complicated this is getting and how, how much work. And if I were to change things, I don't know if it's going to work. 
And so a better approach to this is to use, say, like a kernel regression estimator. Um, and we can lo load the local polynomial package. There are a bunch of ways to do this in R, a bunch of kernel regression packages. We know that the kind of simplest kernel regression is just special case of a local polynomial from simple math we did. So you should be able to fit our, our, our NW um, kernel regression estimator to this using this package. And um, to do this, we can um, have our smooth model. So the function is local polynomial smoother C. You have to read up exactly. I guess I can I can do what I normally do here, which is show the help page. Maybe it'll tell us what that what that notation stands for, right? Local polynomial estimation. Um, and there are a couple different versions of this. Um, but um, the most general, I think, is this um, local polynomial smoother. Um, and it has, you know, x, y, has the kernel, and it has a, a particular bandwidth for the kernel. So in particular, um, you can add in a scale constant, basically, to these kernels, um, and often that needs to be kind of decided. It has a de degree for estimation of the polynomial degree to fit. And those are the, those are the, 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 um, the basic um, uses. So... Um, the bandwidth term is basically a scale factor in that kernel. So it'd be like if I use like a, it, it tells me kind of how close is close, right? The kernels are helping us measure how close together points are. And um, so it's kind of a scale, it's like a standard deviation for the space. And it's gonna change the distances in that space. Um, and you can read up on, on that and help. But I can fit this model. So I think I just deleted it, didn't I? Here's my function. Um, and so smooth, maybe we'll call it smoothed and I'll pass in my X's, I'll pass in my Y's. Um, it wants points to evaluate this at, just like kind of like that KNN function we looked at a while ago. Um, so I'll pass it in my X's again. Um, degree, I'm going to set zero. This will fit a NW estimator, right? Because, um, a... If you remember when I go when we did that little math in in lecture that um, a local polynomial with just an intercept as a degree zero local polynomial was the NW kernel regression estimator. Um, I'll specify a kernel um, Gaussian kernel, and uh, you can read up on. I think it tells you in here somewhere you can read up um, on. So see kernels um, to read up on the different kernels. There are different kernels available. Um, can I do that? Yeah, kernels. Here we go. So Gaussian, cosine. There are different ones, and you can read up exactly what these are. Let's see. Um, but a Gaussian kernel basically has um, is let's say Gaussian kernel of some argument x is basically. Um, something like this. Let's see if we can write this on the fly here. So my Gaussian kernel takes in some argument and it takes in, and it's basically going to be exponential negative x squared. And gamma here is going to be my bandwidth. Now it might be times gamma or it could be divided by gamma. You have to read up exactly on it. Um, I might even say here, but this bandwidth is basically like a standard deviation term. So it kind of um, it controls as a kind of a, it's a tuning parameter in the, in the, in the kernel. Uh, and so we specify our bandwidth actually to directly to this local polynomial smoother. Um, and let's set it, I don't know, at 0 0.1. We'll see. It's a tuning parameter. You'd have to, you know, choose through some kind of cross validation typically. So fit it really quick because all it's doing is basically some weighted regression, right? At the end of the day, it's just, you have to evaluate this kernel and to get our weights and then do a weighted regression. So it's really, really, really easy. And you have to do a weighted regression at each point, but it's it's not too bad. And so the smoothed are my, um, my estimates. And uh, so it actually gives me my x's and beta zero 
is the intercept term, right? And of course, in our model, that is just our estimate. So um, we can plot this. In fact, we can add on to our previous plot. So let's uh, collapse this down. Let's go grab, let's collapse this down too. Let's go grab our previous plot. Something like this. But now it's a plotting that awful polynomial regression we're going to use a basically a kernel regression estimator with a Gaussian kernel. Um, and, uh, and so beta zero, weirdly enough, is our prediction. Um, there we are. And there's our kernel regression estimator. <clears throat> now, it's a little bit choppy. And the reason it's so choppy is because of we have a choice in this bandwidth. So the bandwidth base will choose one. Another way to think about it is how smooth do we want our our estimate to be? Um, and because it kind of whoops, it kind of controls the distance metric and controls the weighting, right? So if you have a really small bandwidth, you're going to have um, like a really tight Gaussian. And so you're going to weight really heavily on points nearby and very, very low on points, even somewhat far away. But if I have a very wide, if I bandwidth set things really widely, then far away points will also be included, right? Um, because basically, like this, think about it as like the standard deviation and the Gaussian. If I have a big standard deviation, that Gaussian is really spread out. And so if that Gaussian defines the weights, then, um, then that uh, then I will have kind of relatively larger weights if I have a very spread out Gaussian than if I have a very concentrated Gaussian with a small standard deviation that's going to weight only locally near near that that individual point. And you can see this kind of directly if I um, change this bandwidth here. Let me um, refit the model. I could change my bandwidth. I don't know to one. And that's much smoother. So the standard deviation is much bigger and it's much smoother. Now it doesn't capture it as well, right? And if I um, were to make it really small, maybe point, uh, point 0.01, that's going to be really, really, really choppy, basically interpolation at this point. Um, so the bandwidth is, is going to relate to kind of degrees of freedom in my, in my model. And obviously there's some kind of... Um, optimal bandwidth, which you could choose through some kind of cross-validation. Um, I don't know what it is in this case. 0.5 works pretty well. Hmm. Somewhere around there, that's kind of capturing it, right? So that's, you know, that's the basic um, kernel regression estimator. And you can obviously change the kernel and you get slightly different results. Um, but we could also fit um, true local polynomials by by changing this degree. So if I wanted to fit um, a, a a first degree um, local polynomial, I would change this to one, and uh, that's what I would get. Maybe I should have. Um, Maybe I'll compare these. The current regression estimated degree zero to do 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 and uh, let's say smooth poly. And I'll leave my kernel regression in red. I'll make polynomial blue. And it probably won't give us a super different answer, slightly different answer. Um, and uh, if I were to change my bandwidth, again, you see similar behavior, um, but you can play around with the degree. You don't have to fit a first degree. Um, so this is like, you know, kind of locally it's fitting lines. Um, maybe we'll change both these just 0.5, see if there's any difference, right? So it's not a huge difference here. Um, one of the differences you see is near the end points, which is a point of contention where the behavior um, 
uh, you will see divergence in all of these smoothing methods near kind of the endpoints of the interval where you don't have, because basically you don't have data symmetric on both sides. And so you get some different behavior there. You start to see um, the difference and actually arguably the blue line does better. It's hard to say, but you can play around with all sorts of different, um, different polynomials. You know, I could fit a fifth degree so obviously now we see a big bigger difference because this thing has a lot more quote degrees of freedom, right? It's going to have a more flexible fit. So you've got to be a little more careful and you can see how it's chasing the tail It really diverges around the tails, but also um, in between. But it's possible that, you know, if you reduce your band, oh, sorry, not reduce your bandwidth, if you increase your bandwidth and have a higher degree, maybe you capture things better. Yeah, I would say that probably does capture it better. Um, you know, so if I have a 10th degree polynomial, oh, oh, you can't go for a 10th degree polynomial, it's going to yell at me, but you can go for something higher um, and increase my bandwidth, you know. But you can see there's a lot of deg degrees of freedom here with the play with things, and these are kind of things that would need to be tuned. So that's kind of the skinny on, um, on, on this, I, I believe here there is a um, a built-in way to do some cross-validation to choose the best bandwidth. Um, so um, <clears throat> I can choose my best bandwidth with this awfully named function. Um, but you can see BW selection. Um, Oops, this should be a capital C, shouldn't it be? Um, and this function, we can actually just oop, pull up the help page on it. Cross-validation for bandwidth selector. So it's going to, so nicely, this has this kind of built in. I'll give them an X, Y. Um, let's just fit a kernel regression estimator, um, a simple zero degree polynomial. And we'll use, stay with our Gaussian kernel. Um, and this does some cross-validation and says, ah, it should be about 0.3, which is pretty good, which is, I guess it was um, going to be around, I said 0.35. Um, but we could just change this to best, I'm sorry, best BW, something like that. And cross-validation says that's the best. Um, and you could obviously change this to like a fifth degree polynomial. And of course, it increases the bandwidth because we have more flexibility in the polynomial fitting. So you want a, you want to increase the bandwidth to make it smoother. Um, and uh, yeah, that does not do so hot. Oh, I need to change my degree. That does pretty well now. So you know, it, they're pretty powerful methods. Um, they're quite flexible. Um, so you do have to be a bit careful. The last thing I want to talk about briefly now at the end here is just splines. Um, that's not how you spell it, splines. And um, maybe we'll make this a little bit smaller. Um, the library for splines is called splines. And in particular, you splines are real nice because um, this BS function is this particular basis for the spline. So I said basically that all splines are doing is they're coming up with a different kind of piecewise polynomial basis for a regression. And so they actually get to fit them um, using LM. So normally it'd be like Y by X. Actually, we go, let's go back way up to our top here where we fit this whole thing, right? Um, somewhere like here, right? So this was, this is how we fit our polynomial regression or something like this, but that's awful and didn't really work that well. And so instead we can say BS, which is the spline basis, it takes the degrees of freedom, which um, basically controls how flexible, how many breakpoints. Um, it's a combination, so degrees of freedom is a combination of the number of breakpoints and the um, degree of the, of the polynomials. And uh, we want to make sure it includes an intercept, which is always good practice. Um, you can specify the breakpoints and the um, 
degree of the polynomial separately, but this degrees of freedom parameter is pretty good. Um, and you can fit this. Of course, they're going to give me an error here, isn't it? Um, maybe we should reduce our degrees of freedom. Is that going to... Um, well, I'm not really sure why it's yelling at me there, but um, seem to be working decently well. So that's not a great prediction. Um, it looks like we need some more degrees of freedom here because it's not quite capturing it. And again, these are the kind of things that one could, for example, cross validate if they really wanted to. Um, I don't know, 20 degrees of freedom. So that works pretty well. So this is kind of an alternative way of doing it. Um, but as you see, it's going directly through, um, it's fitting these splines directly through, um, through the LM function here. So everything I can do with LM, summary, I can do with um, my spline fit. Um, <clears throat> And uh, you see each of these 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 terms are kind of uninterpretable. These are the different, um, you know, all, basically, if I grab my model matrix from this LM object, this thing is 21 columns, so an intercept and 20 degrees of freedom. So it really is just just ex, it's expanding out some. Um, different basis, some polynomial basis, right? So for example, if we had gone back to this horrible model here, and we had looked at the dimension of the model matrix here, this thing would be what? That's 10 plus an intercept, so 11, should be 11. All right, so it has 11 columns, all right? And, and it, each of the columns is x, x squared, x cubed, etc. And splines are doing a similar thing, but they're doing it in a, a clever piecewise polynomial way. But if I set my degrees of freedom at 20, um, we end up with intercept in 20 columns. Of my, and so that's what these different things are. They don't correspond to just the first 20 powers. It's not like that. Um, you can see that because this thing works well where a 20 or 11 degree polynomial didn't work well. Um, and uh, so they're, they're, they're much better. And you can, you can get... Um, other information on this, but you can treat it the same way you would treat um, just a regular regression fit, basically, except now you're fitting with splines. Um, and uh, so this is kind of the other kind of alternative to these smooth splits. Um, um, <clears throat> and uh, opposed, you know, the, uh, the other alternative um, to uh, like a kernel regression or a local polynomial regression is to do the spline regression. Okay, we'll stop here. This is our introduction to, to non-parametric um, methods in R.